Festive season can also be a time of overconsumption, particularly when it comes to alcohol. The Drinks Federation of South Africa has once again emphasized the importance of managing alcohol consumption during festive family gatherings. Experts say alcohol abuse leads to impaired judgment, heightened conflict, drinking and driving, and emotional instability, among others. Let's bring in Drinks Federation of South Africa CEO, Angela Russell, for more on this. Angela, thank you so much for your time and for joining us this morning. Now, how does responsible alcohol service contribute to community safety, especially during the festive season? So thank you very much for that. And I think, you know, responsible trading is an important part within the alcohol industry. And I think when it comes to safety and security, there are a number of factors that, you know, that play a part. I think very importantly for us at this time of year, actually the whole year round, is not selling to minors. We know that you know selling to mi minors should not be consuming alcohol at all. And we call upon all traders to adhere to this very, very important thing. And actually, they should be asking for age verification if there is a question around you know, somebody's age. Another point for us is adhering to the legal um, legislated trading hours. Though trading after times, potentially people have had too much, causing public intoxication and some disruptive behaviors. So again, adhering to trading hours is, is important. You know, sometimes do people do get carried away at this time of the year. So traders shouldn't be selling to visibly intoxicated patrons at all. I know this can be quite challenging, but friends should also come in here and, you know, tell people, I think it's, you know, time to go home. We've had enough. Um, selling according to license type. So if um, an outlet has a license to sell on premise for consumption on premise, they most definitely should not be selling for people who want to, to take home, um, you know, to take alcohol home. Um, and I think creating a safe environment for people, but very, very importantly for us, is, um, you know, not selling illicit or counterfeit alcohol. Mm. Speaking of counterfeit alcohol, I mean, we've seen uh, an uptake with regards to counterfeit alcohol making its way into many stores and, and a lot of communities. What should consumers as well as traders be looking out for? So I think, you know, counterfeit is a problem because it's not made in sanitary controlled environments. We've recently done testing on alcohol that has been confiscated, that was counterfeit. It had exceptionally high levels of methanol in. Methanol has very severe implications for the body, causing blindness, you know, nerve issues, even causing death. We've also seen in the, some of the things that we have tested, accelerants being used in the fermentation process, like battery acid, acetone. We've even detected trace of arsenic. So I think it's very important for consumers to be aware of what they are drinking. Some of the things that they can look for is if they are actually buying it themselves, looking at the price of the product. I think if the price is below the product that they would usually or the price that they would usually play, pay for, they need to be a little bit more um, con con conscious and say, you know, clearly there's something wrong here. The price is too good be to be true. But I think, you know, starting at the, the top of the bottle, things you can see on the cap, for example, it might be dented, damaged, the paint might be smudged, the seal may already be perforated. In some of these counterfeit products that we tested, you could actually see black floating particles um, in the alcohol. So this could be visible. Um, the fill could be inconsistent. The liquid could be hazy or diluted looking. And I think one of the big telltales is on the labels themselves. Um, the label could be at a different height if you're looking at different, uh, the same product, different heights. They could be damaged, very badly printed, spelling mistakes on them. And importantly for us as well, no back label on the, on, you know, on the back of the bottle this should be key things for people to be looking out for mm. so earlier you spoke of the legal obligations that traders have when it comes to alcohol you said no selling to minors um looking out for trading times but are there specific responsibilities for traders with special events um and and those licenses especially now during the festive season so I think special events um, licenses are, are festivals that may be popping up over the festive times, you know, beer festivals, etc. Um, and the license requirements for these people remain unchanged. I think what is important is they don't necessarily advertise um, consistently like the major manufacturers do. So it's very important for them to take heed of the communication code of conduct, which is a self-regulatory code that we have that ensures that we are promoting alcohol in a responsible manner. 
I think, you know, some other things that I want to highlight as well for traders is serving off food. You know, we should be eating, you know, if we are going to be drinking because this, happen, you know, helps with the metabolism of alcohol and um, have water available for patrons, you know. Pacing yourself, having a drink, having water, you know, in between, I think is very, very important. Having non-alcoholic alternatives, um, um, you know, available as well for patrons, I think is is something that they should be doing. Mm. So the Drinking Federation of South Africa, what do you do to, to ensure that the principles of responsible drinking remain a priority, not just, just during the festive season, but throughout the year? So we work um, closely with tavern associations. The industry provides extensive training for um, for um, outlets to be aware of what is required of them. I think this year we've reached over thirty thousand outlets um, from the industry point of view. Um, we train on illicit alcohol, so we do a lot of um, public related public awareness on illicit alcohol, and you know do activities around that. Um, we prov also provide, um, you know, funding for community policing services, particularly over the festive season and the Easter Easter peak times um, around hotspot areas where there are known to be specific issues so that we can also promote public safety. But also our sister organization, Aware.org, does behavioral and educational programs. A lot of work is done with underage drinking in school communities to, to you know, advise them why they most definitely should not be drinking alcohol. Drinking and driving activities, um, you know, also taking the four, especially at this time of year and Easter. And a lot of work around, you know, um, educating pregnant women that they should not be drinking alcohol because of the you know dev devastating effect of fecal, al fecal alcohol spectrum disorder. Mm. Do you find that in general there's an exponential growth in the consumption of alcohol among South Africans? I think what we've we've recently done research and what we have found is that the majority of South Africans, in fact, enjoy alcohol within moderation. So there is that percentage who maybe do drink in excess or, you know, have a condition of like alcoholism, which is a, is a health issue. Um, but generally, we're finding that the majority of South Africans do drink responsibly and drink within moderation. All right, Angela.